Hey, what's up? What's up, Sean? How are you? I'm good. How you doing? Good morning. Yeah, thanks again for doing this. We're, we're super stoked. Uh, my wife is is half Filipino, and my my son's a huge fan of yours, a TikTok fan, and, and oh they, they're really stoked to talk to you. So, um, you. yeah, yeah. So my wife's mom is from Manila, and, and yeah, yeah, awesome. she, yeah. So she's she's very like light complex uh, Filipino, so people. I wish she'd come in here, but uh, people are always like, "You're she's not half Filipino." I'm like, "Yeah, she is. I promise." <laughs> okay, I I sort of get that too. I'm like, I'm on the lighter side. Yeah, um, I'm like, my my parents are like straight up Filipino. So oh I, really? Yeah. <laughs> so you you were born in in California though, right? Yeah, born and raised in California. I grew up in Salinas, which okay. is like yeah, <laughs> North. Wait, where are you from? We're in San Diego. Oh, cool. Yeah, right. yeah. So we're we're both born and raised in San Diego. So um, I saw that. Yeah, you're from you're Salinas, California. Yeah, like what is that? That's, that's up by uh, Monterey area. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. It is by right Monterey. on. We grow like ninety <laughs> percent um, of the world's lettuce. So really? is that right? I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, fun fact. That's crazy. Yeah, we went up there last Fourth of July. I think it was like a year ago. Um, Oh, yeah, cool. to see like Big Sur and, and and a lot of like we drove up from San Diego up uh, through the area. Stayed in it stayed in Monterey actually. Um, yeah, oh sweet! It, yeah, it was cool. Did you yeah. um did you do any sightseeing in Monterey, or did you do uh, any like for, Yeah, for, yeah, we did. Uh, we went to like the aquarium and went to the little like downtown strip area. Uh, yeah, I, I love that area. It's rad, and the oh, water up there is so clear, and it's just so much so much different than <laughs> down here in San Diego. Yeah, I I love the aquarium in Monterey. I used to go there all the time when I was a kid. Oh really? That's yeah, fun. it's it's rad. We have a four year old and a twelve year old, and they were like in heaven there. Oh cool, really cool. Yeah, oh, I was being a dad. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was being a dad. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah, I I enjoy it. <laughs> cool. Yeah, it's fun to see your kids get into stuff that you like, like music or like I was into skateboarding. My youngest sons, yeah. all, all my sons are into skateboarding. So getting the, the smaller one on the skateboard, it, it's all pretty, it's pretty Yo, fun. I, I used to skateboard all the time. <laughs> oh, really? I, yeah, I, um, oh, I've, I've had so many skateboards and I've gotten so many skateboards stolen from me. Oh, um, man. Like, I, I was in like a neighborhood where like if you leave your garage open for five minutes, something will go missing. Oh um, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I used to skate a lot. I'm not good at it, but I used to go down to the skate park when I was like 10, and like try my best to like grind on like. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's, that's kind of awesome how I got into music was through like the old skateboarding videos, like oh. songs and stuff. Being like, oh, who's that? Oh, it's the Misfits, or you know, whatever song it ha happened to be. But that's kind of how I originally started like really loving loving bands and music was all through skateboarding. Yo, I mean, kind of same. I mean, like, I grew up in the MTV, like, probably you too. We we grew up in the MTV, like, music video. Oh, sure. <laughs> like, where I would stay up, or, like, I would wake up at, like, four in the morning to do my homework before school started. Oh, um, just because you'd be watching it all day? <laughs> yeah, but, like, there, like, I would wake up at 4, 4 a.m. and watch MTV while doing my homework and watch all these, like, even skate videos and, like, and see all these like cool kids doing cool tricks and playing Tony Hawk. Um, I, yeah, so I, <laughs> well, just a little flashback of mine. Uh, yeah. Well, how did you get into music originally? Um, I, I have a long story or like to make it short, I, when I was- I have time, old, I don't know about you. <laughs> okay. no, yeah, I'm, I have time too. We could, we could have this conversation. Cool. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's a <laughs> When I was four years old, I um, I had a little toy Casio keyboard, as that I would like, um, mess around with as a toddler, and I would listen to to like my mom's CD collection, and learn songs by ear, on this little toy Casio keyboard, just as like yeah, like my parents wow. would be like, yo, how does he how does he know how to do that, or like how is he able to like pick out melodies and like, um. Just as I don't know, as, as a kid, I was just like super curious, and I, for whatever reason, I was I could learn stuff by ear, not having any like sort of background being a toddler. Mm -hmm. But um, so my parents were like, we should put him into piano lessons, 
since he's like on this toy Casio keyboard and he seems to like it and uh -huh. he's learning stuff by ear just like picking out melodies and playing them on this like toy keyboard um so that's how pretty much I got started was like my parents were like just like saw me doing this as a toddler and I got into piano lessons I did that uh -huh. for a bit um, I started playing instruments throughout grade school. I played guitar. I played. I was playing in bands. Oh, really? Uh, local bands. Yeah, throughout high school, I I was like doing like even everything from like death metal to like um, <laughs> hip tune, pop punk. Uh huh. I, I was playing in so many different bands and doing all these sort of different things, going through all these like phases. Um, so I did that. I started producing beats after high school when I was like eighteen. Um, okay. And I, I what did I do? I started playing stuff. Yeah, I was making beats. I started doing stuff with my MIDI controller. No, I started doing stuff on a MIDI controller when my friend let me borrow his MIDI controller. And I got super into that because it was like, I loved playing video games and I loved like, um, I really loved the mechanical feel of MIDI controllers. So uh -huh. I got super into just like pressing buttons and like, and like making beats at the same time. So I did that and then yeah, how did you like how that all begin? Like you said, you were in pop punk bands or, or in bands yeah. in high school, and then you just you just decided like, did your musical taste kind of evolve into more of the electronic scene? Is that yeah why so you went that route? I've yeah I've gone through like um, when I was in I think going into electronic music, it started with like I went from doing when I started doing like chiptune pop punk it was because i loved this band called anamanaguchi um and so did my friends so we were huge fans of anamanaguchi and we were like let's buy let's buy a nintendo and try to mod it and like um we bought like the cartridge like the um like the custom what is it? i don't even know what it's called but there's like a custom cartridge you can get and you can like load on your own like game files onto it so we did that oh really we made um we got this program called Famitracker, Tracker, and Ian, who was like my my um, bandmate in that chiptune pop punk band. It was called it was this band called Rocket Ship that we started in high school. Okay. Um, did you guys tour? Uh, not tour, but did you play like uh, shows and stuff around your around yeah. Monterey and stuff? <laughs> yeah, we had yeah we had a local music scene. Um, it was like for, it was doing it was like a crazy music scene at that time. I don't know what where it's at right now. Um, but I'm going back to my hometown in like in like a couple days to like visit and like hang out with friends and like visit my family but at that time um yeah Salinas and Monterey and like Pacific Grove and Carmel and like San yeah. Pete, we had like our own um sort of very DIY metal like it was a whole bunch of styles like that were that were like emerging around that time and like mm -hmm. Salinas and we had our own music scene that we were very much involved in and like we would play shows at like different warehouses and like different like random venues and like house parties and like um that that's pretty much what was happening at the time mm -hmm. and all my friends were just like people who were also going to shows in that music scene and like that's what what that's what Salinas was that was that's what I remember of like playing in all these bands mm -hmm. in high school and like um it was very much like we would set up in the garage even sometimes and like play shows to like friends. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So you're saying, uh, you got, uh, you, you, you know, you're in the, the pop punk band and the local Selena scene. Um, and then when you were 18, you started producing beats or writing beats. How did, how did that all begin for you? Like, how did you know how to do that? Like, tell me the process there. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, Shoot, what was I doing? I downloaded FL Studio, um, and then I started. I don't even know what I was doing. I just started making stuff on FL Studio, mm -hmm. like in the in my house or like. Um, so what happened? Yeah, I I was supposed to go to UCLA that year, but mm -hmm. I dropped out before the semester happened. So I was just at home, like making beats all the time. Why'd you drop out? You just weren't interested in going. Yeah, or like I wasn't like, I wasn't I wasn't insecure about it, but I wasn't secure enough to the point where like, I wanted to like put my foot down and like, make the whole, make the whole like journey into um, studying mm -hmm. medicine and like biology and all that sort of thing. Oh, you're gonna go into for for like, 
for medicine. That's what you yeah, were right. originally yeah. going to school for. Got it. I wanted to be like a scientist. Like that. That's what I was into in high school. Mm-hmm. Was like, um, doing like I was super into like astronomy and like um, biology and and doing science. Anyways, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> about that i i did a lot of reading at home on my laptop on my 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 like shitty ass laptop so i was like at home just doing beats for fun because there's nothing else to do during the day in like my hometown at that time salinas was just like there wasn't much there wasn't like anything to do we had, we had like a mall and like you could go outside and go skateboard at the skate park or like mm-hmm. um you could go bowling but that was pretty much all we had in terms of like entertainment so um, for the most part, I was just at home making beats, and then I would DJ at parties every once in a while because um, my friends would throw house parties, and like mm-hmm. sometimes um, they'd throw raves at like the Fox Theater downtown, and like me and my friends would like go to those. Um, but I spent most of my time like after high school just like being sort of confused and like just staying at home making beats all the time, and I got. I, th- I feel like I got really good at it for, for a moment. And then like, um, I put up some, oh yeah, so yeah, I said Ian let me borrow his MIDI controller mm-hmm. around that time. And I made this mashup called Pizza Rolls that I posted to like YouTube and it, and it did really well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I like probably a year later or so, I, I was hanging out in, in San Francisco with um the the company that made that midi controller dj tech tools Mm -hmm. and i met there i met a bunch of people there but very more most importantly i met michael mitchell who was the engineer um behind a lot of those controllers and and like me and michael mitchell we we started probably this was back in like 2013 2014 Mm -hmm. where me and michael mitchell um started making the MIDI Fighter 64 and that was when like using that controller we 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 like 3D printed the case and like Michael like engineered all the insides and like I was just there designing it um and I used that controller that we built back in 2014 mm-hmm. the MIDI Fighter 64 I used that to make a mashup called Marvel Soda and I posted that to I made that I made that video, posted it to YouTube, and that's when things started to like really blow up. Like, um, that's really that's when I really started to like realize that oh shoot, I should like get into this as a career, or, like mm-hmm. or, like make music my career, and like not try to go to UCLA and study um, study STEM or like engineering or like medicine or biology. Yeah, so, yeah. I like I sort of had like a switch in my head go off of like you should do music for a living and it'd be fun. And like, you get to DJ at all these parties and you get to like play all these shows. Uh huh. So after I made Marvel Soda, that blew up, Fader featured it. And that was like my first publication of like, I've never had like a big publication, let alone Fader, which was like a huge, like a, like a huge um, publication at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It like blew up a bunch of artists and like, I was, I was freaking out. I was like, whoa. That's crazy. Cool. Well, you said even pizza rolls did really well for you. Yeah. <laughs> so but it was on the level of like tens of uh, millions. Right. But still, I mean, like when you put pizza rolls up and you started seeing traction, was that just all, like all organically? You just put it up and just, you, you don't know how it's the ball started getting rolling there? Or? Yeah. When I put up pizza rolls, I think um, it was just laying there until like, someone on Reddit posted it and I like went to the front page or something. Oh, wow. Um, that's when I discovered Reddit or like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, where are these, are these, where are all these people coming from? And they're like, mm-hmm. come, they came from this website called Reddit. So I, I like said hi to everyone there. Um, and th- yeah, so that was like my first, like, it got something like half a million views at that time. I think that's, that's a lot still, like, you know, a lot. Yeah, that yeah. was still a lot. Like um, back in the day, um, and I was like, I made that and posted it right after high school. And that was like, I mean, that, that sort of like switched off a light bulb in my head as well, but it wasn't on the level of like, I should make this a music career. Uh-huh. That was but until it, Marvel Soda. 
Yeah, yeah. My okay. First big one, but they're they're all like substantial. They're they're all very important to me, and like, mm-hmm. um, they all had a hand in like like each piece of music I put out during that time had a hand in like jump starting what I wanted to do for like um, most of my day and like what I wanted to do in my free time. Yeah. Um, well, I yeah. like okay. So with Marble Soda, you said Fader picked it up, but was that just another like? You just threw it up on your YouTube channel and people yeah. started liking it. Like, do you know how they got, you know, they heard the song and how it kind of got a little bit of leverage or it was just all like you woke up and it had a million plays and you're like, what is, what is going on? It's both. Yeah. It's both. <laughs> I like, I mean, it's, it was all organic. Um, like at that time I was just posting stuff on the internet and I would post like, yeah, like one video every six months or so. Um, but yeah, it's all organic. I didn't really like have a team of people or like I didn't really have like a lot of people. Um, it was just me like filming in my bedroom or like filming in my dining room. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, um, I had a lot of internet friends, I guess. I, was, <laughs> I would go on, um, what was it? At least, no, I was going to say, you know, SoundCloud was popping around the time of, like, 2014. Oh, yeah. And then, like, a lot of my friends were from, like, places, like, um, where the heck did I meet everyone? I met a lot of people on Facebook and, like, SoundCloud and Twitter around that time. Mm-hmm. So that was sort of, like, my community was, like, um, other people on the internet who also made beats and DJed and did all that sort of stuff. Um I guess. Oh yeah, Brownies and Lemonade. So this company, these like group of friends who throw parties in LA, mm-hmm. Brownies and Lemonade. They flew me out to LA back in um, 2014. Oh wow! And what was it? I feel like, or maybe it was 2015. It was around that time. But that was my first time of like experiencing Los Angeles and the music scene in Los Angeles. Of like, it was like the first time I ever got booked for like a show was through these guys called Brownies and Lemonade. And that that shit was super fun. Um, <laughs> and I, I feel like that helped a lot, or like that introduced me to a lot of people in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. And like, that's where I made a lot of my friends who I make music with. And um, yeah, I'm trying to think what else was like um, imperative in the whole like a big milestone for you. Like, I mean, yeah. them them contacting you was that they just found you off of, of Marble, Marble Soda, or or how did how did uh, Brownies and Lemonade find you? Yeah, I, I think it was for Marble Soda. Okay. Um, yeah, it was. Yo, it was way. Yeah, it was before Marble Soda. So these guys are uh, maybe I was on Twitter or something, but I think I tweeted them, and like, at that time, like, at that time I was just like a small up-and-coming DJ Mm -hmm. um so I wasn't like maybe I had like a thousand Twitter followers at the time but Brownies and Lemonade helped me or like they flew me out to LA and I played my first show here and that's when pretty much a lot of things or like that's when I met a lot of people and that's Mm -hmm. when I made a lot of my friends and a lot of like made learned a lot about the whole music scene in Los Angeles for the first time Mm -hmm. and yeah, from, there's, yo, yeah. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, from there, did you, did you move to LA? Like, what was your next move once you, once you put the show there? Were you still just going home and, and putting songs out on your, on your own? Oh yeah, I um, I moved to LA at the end of 2014. Um, thanks to like, had another friend that I met online, Brian, Brian, who was like my roommate for maybe three years, but I met this, this friend of mine, Brian, Brian Rivers, who was like one of my best friends. And like, he let me stay at his house for like several months. Like I, I was supposed to stay for like one night around like 2015, like early 2015, just cause I was like, I was in the area and I needed somewhere to stay. Mm-hmm. But um, Brian Rivers, like he let me stay. <laughs> like I sort of just like, didn't move from the living room and started paying rent after like what was supposed to be like me crashing for a night and we became like roommates and 
best friends for a while. So what brought, like what made me stay in LA was like, I originally planned and I was living in a suitcase. I had like a suitcase of clothes um, for like the first two years or so, or maybe it was the first year. I feel like I have a bad sense of like, ta- I have a bad sense of like time. Like, oh yeah, that's fine. Happened in like that <laughs> time span. Um, but what happened, what, what was supposed to be like a night of crashing in LA turned into like pretty much me living here. Um, yeah. And then I would, I'd visit my hometown every once in a while, or like, I went from like pretty much staying in LA for like a long ass time and then visiting my hometown once every like couple of months. Uh Uh-huh. So it sort of happened unintentionally. Yeah. And then were you riding with people when you were in LA? Like when you started crying? Okay. Yeah. I didn't write with people until um, 2017. Like for, for like the first two years of living in LA, I made, I was just making beats in my apartment. And like I did one collaboration maybe with like um, Space Girl Jemmy, which was Burnt Rice in 2015. And then I did another collaboration with my friend Hollis called Otter Pop in mm-hmm. 2016. So those were the two songs that I, like for the most part, I was just working on stuff in my own and like not doing a lot of collaborations. But I, <laughs> I started writing pop music in 2017. Okay. So, um, what made you decide to, to go that route? I had a lot of, um, well, let me think. Aha, my <laughs> wife loves that. Is that the apple like cider flavored? It's the peach honey. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, it looks uh, similar. <laughs> I um, I live down the street from Target, so I like, I I found it or like, I've been drinking a lot of sparkling water just because it's like, um, I, for whatever reason, sparkling water is like my um, sort of your go-to. Yeah, or it's like the like you know how a lot of people smoke cigarettes in the studio. Yeah, <laughs> like sparkling water is my equivalent of that. Um, <laughs> It's a much better alternative, I bet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> much healthier. It's much healthier, at least. Mm. Yeah. Um, what was I talking about? Sorry. How to get started I in don't... pop music. <laughs> yeah, how you could how what made you decide to go from writing beats to writing pop songs? Oh, I um I met someone or like who is it? Yo, this producer Blood Pop, he like reached out to me on Twitter and told me to come to his studio. So I hung out with him for a bit. Um, and he's he's like this tall ass seven foot dude who produced um, who produced Justin Bieber Sorry and like a bunch of oh, other wow. um, and a lot of Lady Gaga stuff. So I met this guy who has like I was like dude yo this guy's a legend. He produced my favorite Justin Bieber song, um, and I would hang out with him in the studio for a bit and learn like that was like my first time where I was learning about this world of pop music mm-hmm. and like. And that was just through Twitter, huh? He found yeah. you on Twitter. Yeah. Wow. Um, I made a lot of friends on on Twitter. Um, and then yeah, so I was hanging out. I was I was hanging out with Blood Pop for a bit, and then and that was probably in 2016. And then early 2017, this songwriter Justin Tanner um, messaged me on Facebook and told me, like, like Justin was like, yo. I love all I love the stuff you produce and it turns out Justin Tanner was like he he's a really fantastical and amazing songwriter and he he's like super well established and like he writes all these like um super famous pop songs so so Justin Tanner hit me up on Facebook and he was like hey I'm the songwriter for Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez oh <laughs> <laughs> or one of the songwriters or like I I wrote a bunch of songs that that um I wrote a bunch of Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez songs so like I was like whoa well one of my favorite songwriters ever just like contacted me via Facebook yeah he to like come to the studio so probably in March of 2017 I got into the studio with Justin Tanner and wrote my first pop song or like produced my first pop song in like the span of like 40 minutes and it was like super, oh my gosh <laughs> that quickly like, yeah I didn't real I didn't even realize like I would spend weeks on a beat just lo- like in the comfort of my own house 
and like all of a sudden being thrown into this like room of like super duper talented pop songwriters and like um like I would I would sort of like learn a lot of stuff on the spot and <laughs> be like thrown into this fire of like figure out how to synthesize this sound right uh -huh. now in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> and um I started writing a bunch of pop songs every week with like Justin Tranner and like friends and um, other people in the pop music industry. And I signed to Justin Tranner and Warner Chapel in 2017 at the end of that year. Um, and I was doing like four or five sessions a week, like in the studio in like different parts of LA and like um, fly out. I would fly out to like work with Ryan Lewis. And Ryan was like, Ryan produced like all the Macklemore stuff and like, oh, yeah. <laughs> some being around him. Um, so you met him all that was all done through Justin Tranner and stuff and yeah pretty much or like I met yeah I met Ryan Lewis through because Warner Chapel flew me out and a bunch of other people to go work with him in the middle of the woods and oh wow tell me about that that's a cool that must have been a cool experience yo yeah Ryan's awesome and like um I mean at that time I was I was still like I mean I, I'm still like kind of dumb but like at that time we were like like me and like all like a bunch of other people like we we were all just kind of dumb and like doing a bunch of stuff in the studio um but like we were in the middle of the woods at ryan lewis's place and like he's super cool and like, he has this giant ass log cabin um with like with like four different studios in it and like we we were up there for a week just like making three or four songs a day um, and it was super fun. It was like such an experience and like I barely got into like pop music and I got I barely got into like music that wasn't just like um, super experimental mm -hmm. EDM um, hypersonic hyper melodic stuff. Um, so that was like my first time doing stuff that was like well these people are trying to get on the radio and these people are trying to like make songs that like go big and like land on the billboard chart. Mm -hmm. um, so I was out there for a week with Ryan and it was just like it was just so cool and like just being in the room with like people who who like um who were like super inspirational and like and have done all these like cool things like before you um mm -hmm. it's, it's just like absorbing the energy and like learning firsthand um like being in the room and like sort of like having my personality shift super fast overnight um and like my or at least like my my like mentality and like method of like creative thinking just sort of like um turn pages super fast and you I would learn all these things on the spot and being in the room with like all these cool people like Justin Channer and like Ryan Lewis and Blood Pop and um it's like mentorship sort of like yeah having like someone who knows what they're doing much more than you do because like I didn't know what I was doing. I um, I felt like I was super, I feel like I'm still super new. I feel like I'm still learning a lot. And like, I have so many things that I need to like figure out. Um, but yeah, for, from like 2017 up until like the lockdown, I was in the studio probably like three or four or five times a week. Wow. Um, producing songs, like writing songs. Is that what um, became Mango Tail? Or was that a total? Yeah, Mango Tail is a lot of that. Yeah. Okay. So I have like, I, ah, uh, Mango Tail is like some of my favorite songs that I've ever written, and produced, and those songs are like my, like those are the songs I identify with, like for my own project, because I've I've written like I think I have like 150 songs. Yeah, I have like 150 songs or so. That wow. I have sitting on my I have sitting on my computer, and like Mango Tail was like 12 of my favorite songs that I wanted to like keep for myself and like um put on a project together as like its own universe as it's mm -hmm. kind of, like um this is what um this I wanted these 12 songs in particular to tell the story of like um my sonic adventure and like <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah what a phrase uh <laughs> my sonic okay. adventure yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that was intentional. Um, no pun intended, I guess. Um, yeah, but I, 
yo yeah <laughs> <laughs> That's so those are the, so those are the those yeah so those are the twelve your twelve favorite songs. What about the stuff that you're doing with like uh, with Blood Pop and, and and Ryan Lewis? Were those did any of those see like the light of day on, or were you writing with them for other people? Like how did how, what what were you guys working on? Oh, it's both. Maybe they'll see the light of day. Um, okay, you sh you're I'm not sure. Like, yeah, I'm trying to see if I can like because um, it's hard to get songs to come out. It's like. It's like in the process of making an album, you'll make like over a hundred songs and it's like hard, like when, you when you're working with other people and like when you have features and when you have like, um, like other songwriters and when it's sort of, and when you sample things too, it's like hard to clear things, it's hard to clear samples, it's hard to get the clearance of like the other people who are also working on the song and get their teams and their management to like agree on like um, splits and like money and like, um so i have oh which gets me to this other point of like i have a bunch of other songs that i want to add to mango tail and the mango tail deluxe that i'm in the process of clearing and in the process in the process of like um also working on right now so i have like um yeah i have a bunch of stuff oh uh, i was working with ryan lewis right before the lockdown and we made like a bunch of beats <laughs> we made a bunch of like scratch beats and like the new studio that um, Justin Tranner and me and like a bunch of other people built together mm -hmm. in West Hollywood. So we built this. Um, I'm probably like going off top. I'm probably I'm probably going off topic. I I love it. I don't care. <laughs> right, cool. I want to hear this. <laughs> so we built a studio. So Justin Tranner bought this like um, old house in West Hollywood back around 2017. And over the past few years, um, he he like got it torn down and like turned not necessarily torn down, but like um, he he converted it from like an old house into a studio. Oh wow! And it's like it's like my favorite studio ever. And like we opened it barely January of this year, and we used it for like two months before um, the lockdown happened. So we built this new studio in West Hollywood. And we were making a bunch of we were making a bunch of cool songs. Um, I made some songs with Ryan Lewis there, and Lemons, which is like, or actually, yeah, a bunch of songs in my album were made in that studio. Especially Lemons. With Lemons was like the first song I made in the new studio we built, mm -hmm. um, and that was like a moment of like being super excited over I finally get to using the studio that we spent years on building, and getting to use all this new equipment and getting to use all this like all this new energy of like this building. Mm -hmm. um, and we made lemons that like pretty much first day stepping into this new studio that we spent years building. Um, what else? I'm trying to, we made a bunch of stuff. We made love, wait, we made the medicine song in that studio as well. I oh, okay. Second or third day. Like this is back in January. Um, Oh, so these songs are uh, are that new then? I know yeah, that you just released the record, but you wrote like Lemons like in January and then put it out that fast. Yeah. Wow. Because <laughs> you usually talk to somebody and they're like, oh yeah, I wrote that song two years ago. By the time you record it, you know, get it right. ready to go and put it out. But wow, you wrote some of these these songs like months ago. So it's it's crazy how that happens or like, like the music industry and the way songs get released, it happens so slow where like, you, you talk to someone about their album process and it's like, yeah, I wrote this song three years ago. Right. Which, which was the case for like a couple of the songs in my album, but like half of it was made like very recently, or at least um, like when we were in the new studio, we were just grinding out. We made like 10 songs in the span of like five days that were all like super amazing. And Lemons is one of those, Medicine is one of those. Um, Animal Crossing was one of those songs. So the, <laughs> we did we did a bunch of songs like sort of nonstop. Like I would wake up and go to the studio and not leave until like 9 p.m. Jeez. And it's like, wait, we <laughs> it's like by the time the day was over, it's like, whoa, we made three songs today and they're all like really good. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so like, yo, yeah, January was like, it was, I feel like, um, 
like people get bursts of like spontaneous creative energy and then like sometimes they go through like moments it's like a it's like waves like um like all a lot of my good songs happen around like specific bursts of time throughout my um throughout the past five years and january of this year was like was like that was like one of those times of like this is the new year this is the new century Mm -hmm. um this is the new we built a new studio and we and we have all this new equipment to like mess around with so like considering that like lemons and like medicine came out of that and like it was it was all fun and like it was it was just like a moment of like great creative energy and like we were just having a great time um oh it's crazy like it just like it's it's wild how how long we spent how long we spent building that studio and especially justin fanner like he mm-hmm. spent like the first few years like the few the past few years building this like amazing studio and then like we only got to use it for like two months before like um, everybody like, got like, shut down. down yeah, yeah. Everybody got shut down and like now um um since then i've just been working on everything in my house mm-hmm. um, like I'm in my living room right now and like this is where that's so crazy I, I know that's the one thing about this quarantine that I will say is pretty kind of I don't know cool it isn't the right word but is that I could like t- I'm talking to you and, and you're just hanging out in your house and like yeah. I'm here you know what I mean it's just like it's such a different like more intimate experience I think even uh like your fans and stuff just seeing you hanging out at your house I mean it's pretty pretty wild <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. It's made me more introspective and like I feel like not having like people to like see every day and it sort of made me like you got to like co- you have to have conversations with yourself if anything. Mm-hmm. Like getting to like see people at the studio or like getting to like see people at um getting to see your friends every day. You just sort of wake up and like at least for like the first for like March, April in May, it was very much a lot of confusion and a lot of like, um, a lot of confusion, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of, um, mm-hmm. it's like, you don't, like not pe- not seeing people, not getting to see your friends every day. It, it's sort of like, and not having like a routine of like going to the studio. It, it's like being like shocked into like, all right, well, um, what do I do now? Um, time to set up my studio in my living room and like try to make <laughs> the best out of it. Yeah. Um, which is pretty much how I took Mango Tail across the finish line was like, it's like this, this album was like half done or like, it was like the songs were there, but like I had to like mix and master it. I had to like um, make sure it all flew, it all flowed together. I had to like make sure all the vocals were like um, finished and polished up and like doing all these like things in like my living room home studio. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, yeah, I had to let, I don't know. Um, it was a great learning experience at the very least. Yeah. Well, like, so you, like you were talking about writing lemons and, and medicine in the studio in January. Like, yeah. Right. As this is kind of starting to, you know, stuff didn't get locked down yet, but you know, it had, to, it's starting. And then you put out the, you still were able to put the record out. Like, so you obviously what were, right. did you like have a l- release date on Mango Tail or you, had songs and then you're like oh these are these two are really good too let's just put this all together and make a record like when did you decide to make mango tail like an album to put out oh i um so mango tail came out on may 29th mm-hmm. so my birthday was on may 26th and i want my... oh happy birthday yeah <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> happy yeah it was, it was like two months ago what so um the um i wanted my album to come out the week at least as close to my birthday as possible. Okay. So I planned on May 29th as like, this is like do or die. Um, so this better be the day you put out your album, if anything. So in the whole month of May, leading up to my birthday and leading up to the album release, I was like grinding those songs. I was like grinding my ass off to like finish up the album. And like so much of the album was like done last minute and finished up. Like I turned in... Oh, whoa. I turned in a lot of songs 
literally the day before my birthday on May 25th. So the album came out May 29th and I turned in the album May 25th. Like I recorded some st- I recorded my vocals for Igloo that morning at 10 a.m. And just put <laughs> it in two hours later. Like, oh my God. like the mix on that song is like, I mean, the rest of the album is mixed really well. And like, I'm glad that like people are like pointing it out to me, which I appreciate. I'm glad that people like notice um, oh, people are saying that they that. noticed the mix is different on Igloo? Or not, no, I don't think anyone noticed the mix was different on Igloo. Oh. I mean, I think that was the point of, like, I felt like um, I wanted that song to, like, be rough and raw and, like, just be, like, its own thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm, I'm glad people are, like, are, like, you know, these, this album is super mixed well and, like, super produced well and, like, it's like thank you for noticing my effort and <laughs> time spent. Right, yeah. To, like, polish that up. Um but yeah, so like Igloo, I um I recorded that literally to like the morning of like May twenty fifth, ten AM and like the cutoff time for like turning in my album was that as a, was at noon. So I <laughs> I like finished I finished up that song like two hours before the cutoff time and like st- and like downed out all the songs sent it in and I was like phew I made my release I re- I relayed I made my release cut off time like I don't have to like push up I don't have to push back the release date a week or like a month or anything uh-huh. um so it was like yo actually yeah that whole those like that last week those like last couple of weeks before turning in the album were like a stunt or like <laughs> like it's a stunt to like get it all done and like get it all sounding good yeah like cramming um, for a term paper or something <laughs> yeah, yeah trying to get it turned like, in <laughs> i mean i was like i was like crunching so hard and like getting it done and like <laughs> i didn't want to like let my label down or like let my team down or like i didn't want to like have to like delay the release so um i i worked super hard those last couple of weeks on like getting it done and like getting it like all finished up and like in the package signed sealed and delivered uh-huh so yeah it was like it was like a marathon it was like a sprint marathon of some sort was but it pretty I, exciting when when it actually came out the day it came out yeah <laughs> it was like the most exciting moment of my life was like, it really tell me about I've it always look towards yeah i've always wanted to release an album um like in the whole five years i've been like doing um electronic music and pop music and making beats uh-huh. um, so I'm, I'm glad i finally got to do that i'm glad that like um i have like a cohesive project of my own um to like show to the world and even then i'm still like working on it i'm still like putting stuff together i'm working on like a mango tail deluxe where i want to include four more four or five more songs onto the project and make it even like more like giant make it even like more bigger and like i'm doing some music video stuff for it mm-hmm. i'm doing some like secret stuff for mango tail that i'd love to like um that i'm not gonna announce yet but i'll i'll like tease it eventually um what else am i doing i have like a website where you can like it, there's like a little game you can like <laughs> play and like discover like the characters of the songs oh really uh, that's cool yeah, I had how'd that um, concept. How did that concept come about? I, uh, I, there's this um, super talented artist, um, Anne Alonzo, who I worked with to create the album art for Mango Tail and like the picture of the map and like the track list. Like, um, like her and I collaborated on like, on like um, putting together the visual art for the cover of the album and like making all these like cool things and like building out characters and like little animations for each song. Um, so that was, yeah, she's super talented and like she under like we understand each other and like she understands like um, where I'm trying to get at with like spewing out and like vomiting up my creative, like um, my like creative, like, I don't know, word, word soup. Um, <laughs> so like she, it's cool when like people under- or like can like interpret like me trying to like explain what I'm seeing mm-hmm. and, like, or like what the visual is that I'm like trying to like get out and like and did such a great job at like doing the album artwork with me like 
riding the dog and like my I um my sidekick bird flying over my shoulder mm -hmm. and, like the whole like um the whole mango tail island and like the volcano and like the whole you, like you see like background elements and it's like it's like you see all these characters and like all these references to like stuff in the whole Sean Wasabi universe mm -hmm. and like looking at the the back cover the back cover which is like the map of like me like pointing at the map and like this is where my house is on the island and like um all, all these like little cool easter egg things and like mm -hmm. and we're st we're still like building out even more stuff for like the mango tail universe and like um like even with like working on the music video for for like some songs and like um oh there's so many things that i want to like announce but i can't yet because it's like <laughs> uh yeah you got a lot you're a lot ready to come out but you can't talk about it quite yet yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that's awesome I, but very soon i will um so yeah I'm, oh i love mango tail so much it's like I'm so glad I get to like finish and like put out an album. Yeah, pretty must be. Yeah, once you get it, you had it all done. It's out now. It must be pretty rewarding to see the the reaction from people and stuff too. I would think. Yeah, it's yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, people have been super nice. I have like the most amazing fans, and they're like so sweet, and they they're like very appreciative and like. Um, like hearing people say that like they listened to the album three times and like they loved every second of it um, it means so much and like it makes my heart warm um, and like I'm even then I'm not I feel like there's still a long ways to go or like I mean like as creative like pretty much everyone who does art and music is like it's like once you get the album done it's like you get the album done you put it out and it's like what's next or like what's <laughs> what, what do I gotta do now or like um there's still a boss level I gotta do or like the game's not done yet or like the story still needs to um continue on and like you never really get to the point where it's um you feel like you're finished mm -hmm. so, um like, I'm I'm always like coming up with new ideas and like always trying to like build this out more and like um I'm still making music I'm still making beats every day and writing songs um yeah and what about like the the TikTok videos? Do you enjoy doing those? I mean, oh, yo. I was gonna um, say like you. Not only do you produce these rad rad songs, but you also your videos are super creative on uh, on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yo, thank you. I, I like forgot about that for a second. I like forgot that I was doing like these weird videos of me making beats on objects. Yeah, you oh. like <laughs> you're holding like two like, popsicles. You're like <laughs> yeah. Ah. Oh. Um, so tell me about those. That's amazing. About all those videos I've been posting on TikTok and Instagram and Twitter. Those videos of me like making beats on objects. Like you have the soda machine and like the um like I have a I have a video of me making beats on boba and like um <laughs> there's what what else did I do? I, I have a bunch on my MIDI controller. Um those videos I uh I love um at least in my process, I use so much of my environment or like I'm like the type of person, or like type of producer who likes trying to make use of things in the studio around me or like I tried to like make like sort of how a chef um, uses like all the ingredients of like, like if they're making like a chicken, if they're making fried chicken, they'll use like the chicken bones to make chicken stock or like mm -hmm. they'll use different parts of like an ingredient and like not let anything go to waste. So like when I when I'm like in the studio or like when I'm in like my house sometimes I try to like play the studio as an instrument. Or it's like you ch you like look around you and it's like oh there's like a tape recorder on this desk and like we got to figure out how to use it in the recording process or like um like I like being resourceful when I mm -hmm. like play my music. Um, so like that sort of mentality translates to a lot of like, at least when I'm making these videos, it's like, um, how do we, how do we get these like non-musical objects to like make music? Yeah. Um, which is like pretty much like, even though I'm, I'm like doing that on video, it's like, this is the same process I do when I'm in the studio of like, even like, I remember the Beatles back in the day, like, this is how they came up with like all these like tape 
um, tape machine things. Like they would try to like make use of like the studio and try to play the studio as an instrument. Uh huh. Where you would um, and like that's how they got all these effects with like the the tape recorder, of like making it warbly and like making it sound like its own like fantasy mm-hmm. like sort of timbre. Um. So in the same like sense, I'm always trying to like um make use of my environment that way. I'm trying to I'm trying to think with like my my surroundings like I'm yeah the, yeah if like like I instead like, of just sorry go ahead no go ahead i was gonna say instead of just using like the sounds that are already pre you know loaded that people use to just cut up and use different sounds and beats and stuff to create their own beat you're mm-hmm. finding like random objects to to create sounds and and record sounds yeah totally i mean i do both and like both there's there's no right or wrong way to like approach making art or music but i just love um because like the way our minds think it's um half of it is literally comprised of our environment um like our brains work in in the way that's where it's like we think with our environment and like we think with the things around us because it's like when when someone like messes with like like if I'm going throughout my day and it's like something in my studio is missing or it's like something in my living room is in a different place than it usually is it's like I think to myself someone's fucking with my head or like someone's fucking with my mind and that's literally because like our environment is like part of our minds or like our environment is like part of our like um like our mental headspace um so I try to like taking that sort of mentality and idea I always try to, um, what do you call it? Damn. It's like, it's like there's so many unconventional ways and there's so many like different things that like are waiting to be discovered. Um, at least like creatively and creatively, ah, and like, huh. I'm trying to like string the words to get this together. (laughs) It's okay. <clears throat> but I think it's just the idea of um being open mm-hmm. and like um trying to do things that you wouldn't usually do in your creative routine or like um like going outside the box. Yeah, going out the, going outside of the box or like try to force yourself or like not necessarily force yourself but like um do something different that you wouldn't usually do during the day or like even like have conversations with like different people, like with strangers. And that's where a lot of inspiration comes from is like maybe going to the beach or like maybe going to like, um, maybe having a conversation with someone who's like outside of your um, paradigm. It's like, you don't have to like take it um, face value, but you can like, you can learn a lot of things from it and like have perspectives that you can like take from and like um, try to like make the, make your, add another dimension to um, your train of thought. Mm-hmm. Um, and at least with ma- like me making videos on like different objects and like things that are non-musical, it's like a, um, it's sort of like a cog, it's like, it gives, when people watch it, it gives them a sense of like cognitive dissonance for a second, for like a second of like, this is not how, <laughs> this isn't how like traditionally music is made, but it's like, it, it like fucks with your head for a second and it's like whoa actually that's kind of cool or like i never thought of it that way or like mm-hmm. you're like sometimes you're like go le- go learn a real instrument or like go <laughs> like this is the worst thing in the world or like this is so dumb and then like and then next and like maybe like months later they like see that same piece of media and it's like wait actually this was kind of cool this was, <laughs> this was like groundbreaking or like this is genius like and that happens with a lot of art and music where it's like a lot of stuff that doesn't get understood on like immediately or at face value. Um, sometimes um, people, sometimes it grows on like people and like they learn to appreciate it eventually. Um, mm-hmm. Which is like kind of a crazy thing to me. It's like when a lot of these artists, a lot of artists nowadays, like they put out music that feels more personal and is like, that's more actually like emotionally that that's it's like 
a lot of these artists put out their emotional baby mm -hmm. of music and art, and a lot of the time, um, fans don't like Im immediately understand it, or it's like they'll listen to it and it's like, wait, this is kind of <laughs> this is kind of weird. Mm -hmm. And then after a week, it's like it's like it grows on them for a bit, and like they start to like understand. Um, maybe actually this this movie or album, it's now that I watched it another time, or like now that I like listen to it twenty more times. I actually really like this or it's like actually, yeah yeah, yeah. Um, like it has to kind of grow on you like yeah when you first hear some, maybe a song or whatever you're like eh, this is whatever and then the more and more you hear it you're like oh I'm, you appreciate it more yeah you, know, you're, you give it a chance yeah and i feel like it's it's that way with like a lot of the stuff i do visually because like when i when i do my maybe fighter stuff or when i do my videos of me playing beats on object it's like um, people see it at first and they're like, maybe they're, they're like, yo, this is fake or like, yo, this is like stupid. Why is it? Why doesn't he just play a real instrument or like he has a piano right there? Why doesn't he just use it? Yeah. Like you're like, I can, but <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, I mean, I mean, I can, but like I've been doing that my whole life already. And it's like, I want to, I'm like at that stage in my life where I want to do different things and like keep myself interested. Yeah. It's like, it's like and why would you do a video of you playing <laughs> piano when there's 8 billion other people on the internet playing piano? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. And I did play piano and like do videos of that, but no one's watching it. It's like, um, like I did that throughout grade school of like, I would post videos of me playing piano and maybe it would get like 10 views. Yeah. And then like, <laughs> and that was pretty much it. Like no one, like all these people commenting that like, Yo, you should go play a real piano. It's like you you wouldn't even watch it anyways. Mm -hmm. It's like um, you should, no, you should start doing is linking them to the old video of you <laughs> playing on piano. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're like you should play the yeah. I did in this old video. Here, take a look at it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> it's like um, it's got, exactly. It's like I, I even have like a few videos of me playing piano on like my social media, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's always like no one ever like like those same people who are like go go learn to, to play your actual piano it's like it's not they're on those videos um commenting those things it's like it's like they don't even pay attention anymore um, right yeah they'll just go straight to the <laughs> yeah, yeah talk oh you're just playing a little keyboard thing or whatever but yeah yeah it's like it's just i mean sometimes people are there for the sake of being contentious and like trying to play devil's advocate mm -hmm. um, but then anyway, like besides that, it's like I do a lot of things, not just because it's like weird or interesting, but like also it keeps things fun. It like it gives me a challenge. It like it makes me like want to like learn because I'm sort of like the type of person who tries to get curious and like tries to do new things all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so if I'm like trying to make music on different on on like different objects that are like not musical, it's like this is what I'm doing to like keep myself having fun and like keep myself interested and like this is what this is what makes me excited to like wake up in the morning and want to do it every day um it's so, like from a from a standpoint of like creative process it keeps my it keeps me wanting to do it over and over again mm -hmm. and you've been doing it for like the past for like your whole life it's like it's like i can't like me playing piano every day isn't like super interesting to me it's like i want to like i want like i want to figure out how to turn this lamp into like a a machine <laughs> right right <laughs> right right yeah yeah that's the shit that's fun that's like that's what i look forward to like <laughs> that's that's the stuff i want to like um like there's so many things and like there's so many different things you can do and like it's not like yet to you can follow the rules all the time mm -hmm. yeah yeah definitely yeah like i love what you're doing man like the videos you put up are so rad and so creative <laughs> like the, the you have the chopsticks playing the midi player and like the oh yeah peanut butter sounds and stuff no like I, you're um, making a peanut butter sandwich thank you i oh that stuff is so fun or it's like it feels like um like even learning the chopstick stuff it was like i spent a day learning how to do that or like trying to like get to like work well and that stuff was so fun to me i like it's like i feel like i'm experiencing learning music again for the first time or it makes me feel like that 
Mm -hmm. um, uh, that stuff makes me super, super happy to like do um, things. Yeah, you're just, you're so good at it. It it yeah. I Thanks, mean, dude. very very creative. Uh, I, <laughs> I love what you're what you're doing, dude. Um, I have one more question for you. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Oh yeah. Um, have okay. I'm gonna mention the environment thing again because I feel like um, so much of like your creator process and like so much of like how you approach art and so much of how um, like enjoying what you do in art music comes from like the stuff around you, the people around you, your environment. What's your studio like? Where are you making music? Um, are you are you are you around cool people? Are you around people um, who like support you? Are you are like are your friends like super interested in like the stuff you do? It's like the internal, what like super matters is like your environment and like your internal, um, like your, what do you call it? Like my, like my record label calls it internal marketing. Mm -hmm. of like, what do your friends think? What do your parents think? What, I mean, ultimately it matters what, what matters to you is like most important, but at the same time, it's like, um, half of like what makes up your creative mind is literally what's around you and like um the space that you're in and like the culture that that makes up your context and like all these things um so i i feel like one of those pieces of advice that i wish i like got earlier was like um like pay attention to like what's around you and like make use of like the things that are like make use of of like the things that are around you and like um if you don't have like a ten thousand dollar violin or ten thousand dollar grand piano it's like you can still like grab you can still like make a i don't know this is gonna sound dumb but you can still make make a guitar out of rubber bands or like make like a um you can you can make like a a microphone stand out of like um like what i do is like i i'll i'll hang the microphone from like the ceiling fan if I don't have a microphone stand in the studio or like maybe I'll hang, I'll hang it from a light fixture. Uh -huh. um, there's so many different ways to be resourceful and like, and like you're, and like making art and music and you don't have to have like have the most expensive thing. You don't have to have, you don't have to have like the, the latest tech or like the, like even though I make MIDI controllers that are like new, it's like you don't need to, you don't need to drop $500 on like a MIDI controller to like be a musician and you don't have to like drop a thousand dollars on like a tablet to like be a a visual artist um there's so many different ways and there's no right or wrong way to like approach making art or music and yeah it's that mentality of like thinking outside the box and like trying to like figure out what all the options are and like making use of your surroundings and being resourceful it's that's what that's what makes and breaks like that's what makes a lot of um some of the coolest artists and musicians of nowadays is like even back in the 70s even back in the 70s like the people who were using like the new like those synthesizers like the juno and like um the d50 and like all these newer synthesizers around that time like roland was creating and like the people who were making beats with the 808 drum machine like all those people were just making use of like the, te the technology and the instruments of their time and it's it's like it's not like they were it's not like they saw someone on the internet and they were like, yo, they're, they're using, they're using this, this keyboard and this, this is viral. It's not like they're just like making use of like all the things that were in the studio, the stuff they could, they could buy from their local music shop. Um, and, and then nowadays I feel like um, it's easy for us to like, get into the mindset of this is what my favorite artist used on their album or like this is what my favorite artist used to make or sculpt this piece of art um you don't always have to like think that way you don't always have to think that you have to use the same tools as your as the artists and musicians you look up to like those people were just using things that they had available to them and using things that like like me in my kitchen i'm just using like bread and peanut butter and like wires <laughs> To like make a beat or like I'll hook up my sink and use that as a MIDI controller. Um, so yeah, just just be resourceful. 
make use of your environment. Um, make sure your environment is like a is something that that helps your mindset, helps your like, helps you get into the flow of things. Bring me the bed.